Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we will actually customize the bootstrap uh, library. So what I mean by that? Well, um, we can just customize whatever we want to import, right? We want to customize, for example, the background colors, uh, the primary colors of the theme, right? There is a class called uh, background primary or, or color primary, right? Or we can just use button primary and it have predefined some sort of colors. And if we want to change that, we can easily do it by sas and uh, by node.js. So uh, in this lecture, I will actually show you how you can do this, okay? So in order to do that, uh, you should head to the getbootstrap.com and then click on this documentation. And then in here, you should be able to find theming. Um, and in order to actually um, customize the bootstrap, you also need a couple of other tools. So the first one is node.js. So node.js is a JavaScript library uh, that you can use in order to basically run JavaScript on backend. Uh, but we will just use the package manager from node.js, uh, which is called npm. Uh, you can check whether you already have installed the node.js on your laptop uh, by just typing npm, for example, so npm version into any bash or into any uh, sort of um, terminal, right? And if it prints out some sort of version, you are good. If it prints out uh, npm is an unknown command or something like that, uh, you need to install the npm. But don't worry, it's it's pretty straightforward process. All right, so I've also changed the, the font size of this so that you can actually see what I'm writing. Uh, all right, so the NPM, right? Um, if you don't see this version or other version, probably higher version than I do, right? Uh, but yeah, if you don't see this version, uh, you have to install node.js. Uh, another thing that we will use is the SAS, but I will get to it later on. So the first first thing that we are going to do is go and into our uh, Visual Studio Code. In here, you should open up some sort of empty folder. Uh, I just call this one bootstrap customization. And then you can just go ahead and go to this view and then click on this terminal. And that should open up actually a terminal for you, right? And inside here, you can actually write these uh, command lines. But I'm not doing that because mine is somehow broken. Uh, if I start to type, it just looks odd. I don't know why. Mm, I, I never. Uh, it just one day it starts to have this sort of bug in it, <laughs> but I never thought about fixing it or, or just reinstalling it. I'm just too lazy to do that. I just use bash for this. So what you are going to do is uh, if you are using bash or common line, so CMD in, 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 in Windows, you can use anything you want. Uh, you are just going to go ahead and find the path to this folder. So I will just go to the uh, bootstrap uh, customization, right? And change the folder. So currently I am in this folder. Inside of this folder, I will just go npm install and bootstrap and hit enter. Uh, it might take a little bit of while, like a couple of seconds, uh, but it should eventually install the bootstrap, right? There it is installed. Uh, and you can notice that there are a couple of folders in here. So if you go back to the bootstrap documentation, uh, you can see that this is your project. Uh, then you probably want to define some sort of custom uh, SAS style. So SCSS uh, style for just to customize the bootstrap library. And then you have the node modules and this is what we've just imported. Okay. So this is what we already have. Uh, so uh, let me just go ahead and actually create the uh, SAS file. So I will just create a, let's just use a new folder in here and let's just call this one SASS, so SAS. And uh, inside here, I will just call this one custom.sass, like this. So this is a SAS style. So inside here, we will actually customize the bootstrap theme, right? Inside here, we will actually write our code. But in order to for this to actually work, we need some sort of SASS compiler. If you are wondering what is the SASS, you can think of it as a uh, sort of um, CSS on steroids, right? A uh, basically you can use some sort of programming concepts inside here, like a array objects, you know, um, like uh, variables, stuff like that, right? So. Um, 
yeah, it's just a CSS on 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 steroids. You can actually uh, somehow customize these uh, predefined. If you go ahead and go to this disk and then go to uh, CSS, you can see that there are a lot of classes that Bootstrap has, right? You can see that it, there are somehow like named these colors, right? And we probably want to customize it. Right, and in order to do that, we will just use the SASS. So inside here, if you go to this SCSS folder, and here you can see all of the definitions of uh, pretty much every component that you can can think of in the um, uh, in the uh, in the Bootstrap uh, library. Right, you can see, for example, buttons in here, and you can notice that we are we use something like a variable in here. And so we are setting the font family to something like a button font family variable. Uh, so this is just the uh, functionality of SAS. Uh, it can add like variables and stuff like that to your project so that you can write the code a little bit easier than just with CSS. All right. But with all of that being said, let me actually just go ahead and install this. So you can just type the saslang.com or you can just type SAS into Google and click on the first link. It should take you to this page. Then when you click on the install, um, it should take you to a page where you may want to install. And since we have a common line and since we are badass programmers, I think that we want to install this where a common line is just faster. So what we will do is just in here type npm install uh, globally, right? So G as a global for, for um, it will not be installed only in this folder, but it will be installed throughout your whole computer <laughs> if you want. And inside here, we'll just type SASS. And this should basically install the SASS compiler for us so that we are able to actually compile the SASS code um, into our CSS code that we can then import into our HTML file and use it as a on our website, right? So we need a compiler that basically uh, takes care of this, like when you saw those those variables, right? Um, there is some value hidden between behind it, right? And in CSS, you cannot see something like this as a this is not a valid valid font family for CSS, right? But what the compiler does, it it replaces these variable references with the actual value. So this this will say something like open sans or or some other name of the font, right? Cool. So we should have the npm uh, the SASS installed. So now we can actually customize the Bootstrap. So if we just go back to the Bootstrap documentation inside here, you can notice that there is some part called importing, um, and there is like first sort of article or first sort of code snippet uh, that says basically import from these modules Bootstrap. Okay. Uh, so what this line does, it, it, it imports all the components of Bootstrap uh, into your SAS, right? So that's what you want to do if you just want to use the whole Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a huge library, right? It, it has a lot of predefined CSS styles and you, a lot of times, a lot of times you don't want to use everything that's in there. So, uh, if you don't want to use everything that's in there, in here, you can just import parts, different parts of Bootstrap in your project. So for example, you just want to use the grid, right? So you just import this grid. And uh, why is this important? Well, uh, this file, right, if you import everything, uh, it contains a lot of stuff that you don't want to use, right? And the file is much larger than this sort of custom import, uh, custom import file, right? This can make the file a lot, a lot smaller, and that means that your page loads faster. That means that you rank higher in your, in the Google search, stuff like that. So all the good stuff. So I highly recommend, uh, if you want. Uh, you probably want to just import the stuff that you actually use in your project. Okay, so you probably want to customize what you are importing. Uh, but for this, for the sake of this video, I will just import everything. So let me just copy paste it into our custom that's SASS like this and save this thing. And this should basically import everything. 
Also, another thing that you may want to do is install some sort of SAS extension so that it highlights the parts of your code. So just go to the extension tabs and then type the SASS. Uh, and then you just install, let's see the, the first one, I think that it should uh, highlight the syntax and use a autocomplete and formatter. So this is all the good stuff that we need. So if I just go back, there it is, right? You can see that it's highlighted. Nice. So let's actually customize the uh, the SAS file, the bootstrap library. So what we will do is above this import, we will just type in here uh, theme colors. So this uh, dollar sign uh, is basically representing a variable. So basically it's just saying, hey, uh, this is a variable. And we will put a parentheses in here and we will just say that uh, there is like some sort of primary color, right? And we just want to set it to, let's just go with black. So let's just use this thing. And this should actually change the primary color of the bootstrap theme into black. If you want to change multiple colors, right? For example, you want to change also the secondary, you just write comma, uh, secondary, secondary I think it's spelled correctly and inside here you can just type whatever color you want so for example red right like this one and you also need to put the semicolon at the end of the line and if you save this whole thing uh, you can then compile this whole whole thing <laughs> into a CSS file that you can actually import so if I just close this thing up uh, we can just use the SAS compiler. So we will just type the SASS and then we have the input file. So the path to the input file is actually in the SASS folder and then the custom dot SASS, right? And we want to put that out into, let's just go with main.css, right? And if you hit enter, let's see what happens. It actually compiled everything, but uh, we've got an error, probably. Yeah, it expected. All right. Yeah, of course. This this has to be um this has to be a CSS. So instead of SAS, it should say S C S S, right? Uh, so currently, I think that this should probably work. So if I just go back here and do the same command. Let's see. Um, all right, I'm reading essay. Yeah, of course, we changed the file, right? So inside here needs to be a CSS. Uh, so if I change that, um, let's see. Okay, color is not, of course. So these needs to get out. Okay, so you just type the color without uh, these quotations uh, around it. So like this, let's save it and let's reload it. No, or let's just compile this again. So if I hit enter, uh, we should be good for now. I think that this should work. Uh, so let's see. It takes a lot of time to compile. So I think we are good. Yeah, so no error messages. We are good. Uh, if you open up the main.css, uh, you can just take a look at all of these styles that are predefined in the bootstrap library, right? You can notice that the whole bootstrap have around 10,000 lines of code, right? which is a huge amount of code, right? And you can also imagine how large the file is. But if you, for example, search for something like primary, uh, you can notice that the color is actually black, right? We've overridden it. So if we, for example, in create a new index.html file, so if I create a new index.html file and inside here I import the bootstrap that we just compiled, right? So the main.css that we just compiled and then I just create a button with the class of button primary, uh, you can notice that when I open it up in our browser, it is actually black. Uh, and you can change a lot of things. Uh, once again, if you just go to the bootstrap documentation, uh, you can just uh, search for things that you may want to change, right? For example, border radius, stuff like that, right? You can just simply copy paste it into your uh, custom.scss like this. And if you just put it in there or like make it really large, let's just go with two rams, really something stupidly large and just compile this again. Um, it should compile 
and then when you reload the page I'm not sure whether it, the button will have border uh, as big but I'm not sure so if I reload the page let's see yeah there it is so there is a huge border around it and that's just based on the uh, basically default border radius that we've uh, changed in here okay uh, so obviously you can change a lot of things I will not go through uh, all of them you can see in here uh, are the are the options that you can change uh, so I will not go through all of them I recommend you just uh, check out the whole documentation by yourself uh, because that's like better resource that I can provide Re really this is like one of the best documentations that I've ever read uh, the bootstrap documentation is really great uh, so yeah I think that this is actually pretty much it for this whole video um, I think that you should be able to customize the bootstrap uh, library on your own now uh, and yeah I hope you liked the video if you did feel free to hit the like button uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel to see more videos like this one and I will see you next time bye